Hello there, welcome to Create Tech. Today, we're going to be learning how to make a calculator using Turing. So first, we're going to think of an algorithm for a calculator. So first, we're going to ask the user for the first number. We're going to ask for the second number. And then we're going to ask for the operation. This calculator will not have GUI buttons. That um, calculator will come out um, maybe next time. So first, we know we'll need at least three variables. One storing the first number, one storing the second number, and one storing the third number. So in the variable section, variables, we're going to have the names of the variables. So first it's number one, um, in, oh I forgot, var, var number one is an integer, um, var number two is also an integer, and var operation, which is a string. Um, actually, um, it's not an integer, it's a real number, meaning that there could also be decimals, as you know, um, calculators um, provide an area where you could you know type in decimals so calculators are not only only for integers or for everything like by everything I mean you know integers decimals and all that so we have number one number two in the operation so we're gonna need to um, assign values to number one, number two, and the operation by asking the user what they want um, to calculate. So first we're gonna put number one and I'm gonna leave a space for the user and I'm also gonna use the dot dot option so that the user could te um, uh, you know, write the response on the same line instead of going to a new line. This is just for formatting purposes. I just find it um, better looking. So that's why I do this. And then we're gonna get number one. That means whatever the user types will be stored into the number one section. And then we're gonna put uh, number two. Number two and this is actually my prompt that's what you call it a prompt get number two and then we're gonna do the operation put operation I'm gonna prompt operation and then we're gonna get the operation by get we're storing whatever the user puts into the global variable so let's check this out. So I'm just going to move this in so everyone can see. Number 1. Let's have number 1 being 9, number 2 being 10, and the operation being plus. No errors because plus is a string, 10 is an integer, 9 is an integer or a real number. Integers and decimals are both considered uh, real numbers. And now this is the um, input section. Input, input section. This is the declaration section. Declaration section. And now we're gonna need. We have the input section and we have the declaration section. Now we need a processing section. Processing. Okay. For the processing section, we're gonna use number one and number two and the operation to give the user an answer. We're gonna need if statements for this. So we're gonna say if um, operation is equal to plus then then the user I mean then we're gonna add number one and number two. So we're going to need another variable for the total. Total is not real. So that 
Oh, number one plus number two could be stored into a total. It wouldn't be a constant because it's not going to be the same number each time. So, when we're done that, we're going to indent. I just press the tab key. And then we're going to say um, total is assigned to value number one plus number two. Total is assigned to value number one plus number two. And then we could actually put total out like right now, or we could save it for the output section. I'm actually going to save it for the output section. And now we um, solved the plus issue. So that's done. What about subtraction, addition, and multiplication? We're going to do the same thing. Operation is equal to subtract, then then total is assigned the value number one subtracted by number two. And then we're going to have another else if operation for multiplication. We're going to use the multiplication symbol. Then total is assigned the value number one minus number two. And finally, we're going to have another else if for division. I'm just going to use the slash for division. Then total is assigned value number one minus number two. Not minus, division. We're going to use a slash. And then we're going to end if. Whenever we open an if, we have to end it. And now the output section, we're going to have put, um, put, the total is, and then like comma, and then we're going to have the variable total. And now we're going to get to see all of this in action. Number one, let's say number one is ten, number two is ten. And we're doing addition. When I click enter, it should say total is 20. Because 10 plus 10 is 20. And there, total is 20. I'm actually going to put skip so it skips a line. I'm going to show you um, the demonstration right now. So let's say 10, 10 plus 20. Let's just skip the line. And now let's try for... Subtraction, 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. That is also correct. Now division, I mean multiplication first, 10, 10, multiplication of, oh, 10 times 10, and it gave us 0, when the answer should be 100. That is because I made a mistake. It should be the multiplication symbols of the subtraction symbol. Silly me. Number 1, 10, number 2, 10, and then the multiplication symbol, 100. That is correct. And now division, 10, 10, divide. Your answer is 1. And all of these could also have real number, meaning decimals. So we could have a, that number point that, and then this number point point that and plus and it'll give us an answer in decimal notation let's say 4.2 whatever whatever that's too big we want to round it to round we're going to use a colon total colon zero colon let's say we want to round to the nearest hundredth um, two so two decimal places now we're going to see this in action, 10, 10 plus, as you can see it says 20.00, if it was, let's say a big number, 100, one, that point something, multiplication, there will just be two decimals, and it's going to be rounded, which is also pretty cool. Today, we learned how to make a calculator using Turing. Please like, comment, and subscribe. 
thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.